Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone uh, welcome to this class once again uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, the probabilistic language model. Uh, before that let me uh, give a recap of what we have done and where uh, we are going uh, with respect to learning and understanding words, sentences and so on. Okay. Uh, earlier we had seen that uh, context is very important in terms of understanding the meanings of the word uh, in a given document. Uh, the next step uh, in terms of uh, understanding a, a document uh, is understanding a sentence, correct? Uh, so, we need to understand uh, how the uh, words are strung together to form a sentence. So, if you understand how you learn the language uh, when you are very young, nobody told you uh, the syntax of the language, how uh, the verbs and nouns play a part in uh, constructing a sentence and so on. So, you have been listening to your peers, your teachers, your parents and then try to pick up uh, uh, new words and then try to repeat what you have heard earlier, correct. So, in some way uh, we are able to capture the patterns in our brain and then make use of that whenever uh, there is a need to use that particular word or sentence. Uh, how do we repeat or replicate this process uh, while uh, making the machine uh, understand the word and then trying to construct a sentence out of the words it has understood. Okay. So, before uh, moving on to that, uh, let me first uh, ask you a few questions. Uh, uh, even before asking you those questions, let me tell you what is uh, going to be in this lecture, uh, so that you get a very high view, higher level view of uh, what you are going to be learning in the next uh, uh, few minutes. I okay. will uh, be giving a very brief introduction to probability, it is very important for us to understand this. Uh, many of you would have studied probability, uh, I am going to be just connecting uh, the NLP with the standard terminologies of probability and then see how we can make use of that in our studies here. Uh, and then I uh, will talk about examples of uh, the sample space, uh, events and what is a random variable with respect to uh, the documents and words. Uh, we will talk about the conditional probability, we will talk about uh, some examples uh, using bigrams and trigrams. And then we will also talk about the independence and how two words are independent or dependent depending on uh, where they occur. Uh, and then later we uh, bring in uh, the language model introduction and I will define what is a chain rule, how to compute uh, the probability of a sentence, uh, then I will bring in the mark of uh, assumption in terms of uh, reducing the complexity of the computation and so on. Okay. Uh, so, let me get to the next uh, slide where I am going to be asking you a question. Okay. So, this is a very general question, most of you would know the answer for this. Find out what could be the last word in this, how are you. Okay. So, what could be the last word? So, I will give you about 10 seconds, think about the word that could be formed at the end of this sentence. Okay, if you have not gotten enough time, you can pause this video and then uh, think about it and then go to the next section of the uh, slide. Okay. So, how many of you have thought about you? Uh, have you got, gotten any other words at the end of this sentence? So, let me uh, give you an example of what Google Ngram viewer does. 
So, we will talk about this little later, but I am going to be giving only the output of what the n-gram viewer does. So, if you look at uh, the n-gram viewer, uh, which is based on reading all the books that are available in the Google books and then the uh, end of the word or uh, end of the sentence is picked up based on how often they occur in those books. Okay. So, you are right, I think most of you would have figured out the first one, right? how are you? Right? Uh, how many of you have thought about how are we? Okay. And then there are also places where there is the letter, the word the appears after how are okay. and they, how are these, how are things, how are your, how are such, how are our, how are all and so on. So, it gives only the top 10. So, what actually this uh, n-gram uh, viewer does is, it reads all the books and then tries to figure out what could be the possible word after how are. Okay. So, the first two words are given. So, it is going and then finding out, uh, you, you remember the trigram. So, in a trigram sequence, it tries to find out the first two words are how are, the third one what could be the third one. So, you can also do this in the uh, n-gram viewer by just using this option how are and then star. Okay. When you do this, you get a very similar uh, graph like this. I am sure you will get the same as this may not be the similar one because the uh, the corpus is fixed. So, you should be getting almost the same uh, uh, graph that you are seeing right now. Okay. So, let me uh, take you to the next uh, question. Okay. So, now what I have done is I have taken the middle word off uh, and now you have to find the middle word how dash you. So, I will give you again about a few seconds to think about the word that could be the part of the middle. Okay, how many of you have come up with more than 5? If you need more time, you can pass the video and then take your time and to figure out how many could be formed in the middle of the sentence. Okay. So, let me show you what Google and Gram viewer had found. Okay. In the same fashion, now we have a trigram. Uh, we have the first word and the last word. The middle word is anything. right? So, you can just have uh, you can use this phrase and then search in the uh, Google and Gram viewer. So, you will get something like how do you. So, you see there is a do, it is not or as the first one correct. So, here uh, in the Google books probably how do you uh, phrase had occurred more number of times than how are you. Uh, this should be you, I am sorry. Okay. Uh, and then the second one is how can you, the third one is how did you, you see the variations. right? So, since you are given the first slide, you know I told you that it is how are you, it is possible that you would not be able to think more than 2 or 3, maybe some smart one would have thought about more than 10. right? So, uh, if you take the context uh, differently, now you are filling the middle uh, with different words. Okay. Let us go on to the next one. So, I have taken the first word out and then uh, asking you to find out what is the first word. right? So, you can search in this fashion in the Google n-gram and let us see what we are getting. See the variations. right? So, we are blinded by the fact that earlier we had seen how in the uh, first place. So, we would probably think all the time how and then uh, maybe you know we will be thinking about the other ones, we will be 
may be a little difficult for us to find the rest of the uh, words that are going to be appearing as the first one. So, in this case if you look at it we have what, why, how, where, what and then the last one let me take the last one at the start. So, are you is also the uh, sentence that you can form. So, what uh, uh, he, uh, Google had done is it is using a start symbol as the first symbol. Okay. So, for all the sentences remember there will always be a start symbol and there will always be a end symbol. So, if you want to really process it you have to look for the start symbol first and then the end you are processing when you see the end of the sentence. So, normally we use this as our uh, starting symbol and our ending symbol. Okay. So, uh, what did you gain from this? So, what we have seen here is uh, using a different context you will be able to find different words. right? So, the words are coming into the play uh, when the context or different words are coming into the play when the context changes. The context is so small here even if it is so small the words that are feeding in into the middle or the first or in the last are changing uh, drastically. So, uh, how do they really uh, uh, come into play? So, as I mentioned earlier uh, based on the trigram in this case since there are three words uh, the Google uh, ngram viewer would have scanned through the entire Google box and then figured out uh, for the first example uh, R could be the first one because the R would have happened more number of times when you are giving how and you as the context. And then if you look at the uh, second one, uh, if you look at the the first one, first one, the U as the last word correct. Uh, so, that happened so many number of times the num the it has counted uh, that particular trigrams had occurred so many number of times. So, that comes as the first in the first graph. The second one uh, the middle one is missing right. So, it goes and then finds out what could be the middle word and then it counted all those words uh, all those trigrams and then uh, figured out that the number of counts for do is more when it is combined with how and you is more. So, it, it brings the uh, how do you as the first one. So, there is some kind of a counting involved in this and it also tries to find out uh, what could be the first one to be uh, placed and then you can see that in all the cases the first one is very highly placed right than the rest. Correct. Okay. So, uh, can we uh, how do we simulate this? So, how is it possible? So, we are going to be getting into the details of this in this lecture from now onwards.